Ever have one of those games that you play as a kid that you come across it and you're instantly intrigued even though you have absolutely no idea what's going on like this world makes no sense everything is weird you're not entirely sure what your objectives are and yet you keep playing it well I've got one of those games today and that is Corn Cob 3D, developed by Pie in the Sky Software and published as Shareware in 1991. This particular release comes from one of many various distributors from back then, this one being Software Solutions. It didn't do a great job, to be honest, with its ambiguous 3D flight simulator title and generic aircraft artwork misrepresenting the game, but its developer, Kevin Stokes, was just psyched to have a game available for sale in stores since just a few years prior, he was still getting his start making screensavers. The first of these was known as Intermission, a shareware TSR program that simulated flying through space. Sure, it was your basic Starfield simulator, but it came out years before Windows made these more popular and provided some vital experience in programming. After some success with his screensaver, he was fueled by Sublogic's flight simulator and his own master's degree in physics, and Kevin got to work on coding the game using 16-bit 8086 assembly language, using an old book he found on flight mathematics as a physics reference guide. When this was combined with some help from college friend George Welch, the result was a 3D game that ran on a 286 with little memory and an EGA video card. Corn Cob 3D was originally released online through bulletin board systems before catching the eye of publisher MVP Software. Through them, the game saw promotion and retail sales and found quite the audience for its time. This success eventually led to Pie in the Sky making the game creation system which allowed users to make their own 3D games. This was the company's real claim to fame and resulted in a plethora of fascinating stuff, but that, my friend, is a tale for another day. We'll be looking at several versions throughout this video, but the main one will be Corn Cob Deluxe, which is the full version of Corn Cob 3D. This was released under MVP Software through Personal Companion Software, a company known for distributing registered versions of shareware games on floppy disks inside of a neat little orange and green package. Otherwise, the game was available through MVP as a direct mail order game. Cob of Corn in the third dimension begins with a simple text screen letting you know the game you've just started up and who created it. Or at least it did in the earlier versions. The one I had as a kid began with this intro story filled with digitized photographs. The story being that there was no World War II and the Nazis never even happened. Instead, aliens attacked, destroying most of the planet and enslaving almost everyone else. By 1949, a resistance had built up, and humanity is getting cocky, and you play one of the gung-ho pilots striking back against the alien menace. This version also added some other intro animations, as well as an awesome ad-lib soundtrack by James Collymore. No matter which version you choose, though, you'll eventually reach the main menu program. And yes, it's an entirely separate text mode program, which then exits and configures the main executable to play the game. But yeah, it's got all the stuff you'd expect from a menu and then some, including a spoof option, which randomly jumbles a new title for the game and a parody of other popular flight games from the time period. You can also get some registration information in the shareware version, letting you know just how lame your game is compared to the full one, as well as the available quote-unquote sequel. This was the Other Worlds campaign, which added six alien planets to fly around in addition to Earth. And what do you know, I have a copy, so we'll be taking a look at this as well. Start the game by entering the duty roster, which allows you to create a new pilot, view your accomplishments, and bring them back from the dead if and when they fall in battle. After this, you can either jump straight into the game's campaign through combat missions, or you can fly a training mission. This is a practice mode. And here you can fine-tune the game's enemies and fly an invulnerable plane so you can mess around without risking your pilot's life. It also provides a step-by-step -step tutorial, which is pretty cool for 1991 and even cooler for a shareware game. Once you are ready to meet the aliens and die, just choose a location and mission from the Theater of Operations and prepare for takeoff. 
Hopefully you've got a joystick plugged in, because while you certainly can play it with a keyboard, it's infinitely better with a good stick in your hands. Though the difficulty in physics realism can be tweaked to make it more challenging, overall the game is very simple to play. Push the throttle forward, reach 150 miles per hour, pull back on the stick, and take off. Corn Cob simulates a plane known as the Corn Cob, which is based on the F4U Corsair and its Pratt & Whitney Corn Cob engine as it was known. It's on par with other World War II era flight games of the time and is surprisingly good for a game that was given away largely for free. There just weren't many, if any, other shareware flight sims, so the fact that this one flies so well and feels so balanced is just awesome. You've got an absolute ton of controls spread out all over the keyboard though, and it goes beyond just flying planes. You can fly, use your rudders, look around, shoot machine guns and missiles, drop bombs, engage boosters, toggle autopilot and flaps, and even eject from your plane, but more on that later. For the most part, you'll be taking off from various airstrips, making your way to objectives, doing something to them that usually involves destruction and mayhem, and make your way back to base. Of course, about a million things can go wrong along the way, and that's what makes games like this so fun. First off, your opponents are freaking aliens and UFOs and stuff, so you don't get the typical World War II dogfighting. Instead, you're constantly being bombarded by anti-aircraft artillery, KLA death ball homing missiles, barrage balloons, bee swarms, mind benders, and freaking UFOs. Anytime you reach enemy territory, you'd better have your guard up because there's almost never a moment's rest. You're nearly always having to deal with four or five things at once, many of which are either trying to kill you like the mortars and death balls, or trying to make you hallucinate and disorient you like the mind benders and power generators. All this can be outmaneuvered, or indeed destroyed, with enough firepower, but man, this game is great at making you feel completely outgunned. Not to mention weirded out, especially when playing this as a kid. Everything looks and sounds so, well, alien. Truthfully, Corncob freaked me out a bit because it just seemed like nothing was right in this world, and all the alien structures and weaponry looked bizarre, foreboding, deadly which is precisely how it should be, so I have to commend Pie in the Sky on that front. The filled-in, low-polygon graphics definitely lend to that weirdness, and there's something about this generation of 3D games that I still find absolutely captivating. This vaguely detailed aesthetic makes things seem like they are truly horrible and can inflict serious pain, and I love that. The images that you get when you fail add to this even more, with a surreal and final quality about them. Sometimes you'll just straight up die, other times you'll be captured by aliens to clean their toilets. I also love that when you're shot down or flying in is too dangerous, the mission doesn't have to be over. When you eject from your plane in the air, obviously you'll go flailing around and will totally splat on the ground before long, but just pull your chute and you can glide in a parachute safely to the ground. Once you're there, you can continue your mission on foot, and wow, this was just entirely too cool once I first experienced it. You've got a pistol with a limited number of shots and a single assassin's bomb that you can remote detonate to complete a final objective. You'll even get to do things like land in an enemy base, jump out to steal some intelligence, and then hop back in to make your escape, or even remote control your plane to use it as a distraction and a weapon while you're on the ground popping caps and alien skulls. While on the ground, you'll definitely have to contend with aliens and robots as well as those same pesky UFOs and homing missiles shooting down at you, but if you can make it through everything, there's still a chance you can win. Of course, getting back to base after this isn't so simple, and while you can call for an emergency recovery van to come pick you up, there's no guarantee you'll both make it back alive. And if you manage to leave your plane near your airstrip, you can even waltz around the airport grounds, go inside the air traffic control tower, and, uh, um, <laughs> make a new friend, I guess. That's what that gesture means, right? Let's be friends? Anyway, Corn Cob is an impressive DOS game, at least in relation to the expectations of most free shareware games of its day. Not only is it a genre that was seldom seen in that way, but it featured real-time 3D graphics, a truly unnerving atmosphere, and intriguing gameplay, both in the air and on the ground. And when you were done with the main game, you could make your own missions in the Mission Builder, and even customize your own sound effects through messing with FM synthesis programming right through the main menu. Stick all of this in a blender and add some totally subjective but intoxicatingly nostalgic childhood memories, and this here is a game that found a way to stand out and earned its spot in my brain. 
Even if you don't look at it in the context of its contemporaries, Corn Cob is still an important game because of what it meant to Pie in the Sky and their subsequent business. And it's arguably interesting from an artistic standpoint because these minimalist graphics are bafflingly appealing nowadays if you ask me. It may not have anything to do with the central core of an Ear of Maze, but it has everything to do with old DOS games being awesome, and for that, I salute it. And if you appreciate my appreciation of this game with a silly name, then you may find that the other things I cover are appreciable as well. I've done a ton of videos and there are a lot more planned and coming in the future. They are released every single week, so subscribing would prove beneficial if you would like to support that idea. You can also follow and interact with me and other LGR peeps on Twitter and Facebook, as well as support the show on Patreon, allowing you to do some cool stuff, like get videos early, get signed floppy disks, and whatever else. And as always, thank you very much for watching.